Hi guys. Hi everyone. Before you guys even uh, start watching the rest of this video and learning about the Riviera and the Skyliner and if we were to buy points at another resort, make sure you guys subscribe. We're going to be going to Disney in about a month or so, and then we're going to Disneyland uh, in the fall. So you guys are going to want to watch our channel and you know get to see stuff that we've never seen before, like the 4th of July fireworks, or going to Disneyland for all you guys who are on the East Coast. And besides those two trips to Disney, we have some exciting things coming up this year. Very, very exciting stuff. And I'm so excited to share that with you, so please be sure to subscribe. And make sure you guys click that notification. We thank you guys. Uh, I think we have close to 200 uh, subscribers as of this point. Thank you all you guys for who subscribed. Um, make sure you guys click the notification bell though, because if you don't do that, you will know that we've updated a new video. And subscribing is free. All it does is put our videos on your homepage on YouTube. If you hit that little bell, all that does is send you an email when we upload a video. Totally free. No reason you shouldn't subscribe if you watch our videos. And you're not going to get spammed from its own. You won't get spammed. We try to post one video a week. Even when we have videos from our Disney trip, we do one video a week. Also, be sure to leave a comment on this video and like this video if you want to see more from us. Today, we decided to talk about the new... DVC Resort, the Riviera, that's going to be built around the Caribbean Beach Resort. It's actually already built. I guess it's most of the way built. It's supposed to uh, open fall to December of 2019, so fall, winter. Um, we decided to talk about this because we were watching some Disney YouTube. We fell into that Disney YouTube black hole, and we just started sharing our opinions to each other, and then we're like, wait, stop, time out, let's put a camera in front of us. So, we decided not to just make this video only about the Riviera, but we're actually going to discuss about um, hotels and the resorts on property, and um, if we ever were to buy another property, where we would want to stay. Um, since we have not seen uh, or done the walkthrough for the Riviera yet, we're not going to say, oh, we've watched this, and here's everything we learned from everyone else. We've literally just watched videos. So... We just decided we're going to show you a couple of clips of the Riviera and then discuss why we think we should either pick the Riviera or stay at a different uh, home resort. Right now, our home resort is Polynesian. And if we ever wanted to buy anywhere else, where and why we would want to buy. So elsewhere. that way, if you guys are getting caught into the hype of the Riviera and how new and nice it looks, um, that you know from people who are, ex or I wouldn't call us experienced in DVC, but have had DVC for about four years now. Um, and we've stayed at a few DVC resorts, why we would do the things that we do. Um, we've been through the booking process, the wait list process, trying to plan a, a, a spontaneous trip, which they tell you not to do with DVC, but who can't help randomly going to Disney? So if you're tr thinking about DVC or, you know, looking at all the pretty pictures of the Riviera, we wanted to help you with our opinions and maybe, um, maybe you'll see some of the negatives that no one's really talking about at this point. Yeah, everyone's all hyped up about the uh, Riviera, which, again, we haven't seen it yet, so we're downplaying it. It's but... beautiful in pictures. Oh, yeah, no, the videos that we've seen from other YouTubers and pictures that we've seen on Disney's uh, website, it looks really, really, really pretty, but we haven't seen it, so we're just going based off of what we've seen. So we apologize for any of you guys who have already bought into the Riviera. I apologize in advance. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just our opinion of why... Um, why we would probably go somewhere else, but let's talk about just the Riviera right now. So the Riviera is actually modeled after Europe. Um, it has a lot of Italian, Mediterranean kind of influences in the art, um, as well as the decor, which we really actually like. Yes. There was something we couldn't place about it. Um, I actually had to look up what they said the theme was. Um, which and then what? Yeah, and then what, what she said? Oh, it, it's European and all that. We're like, oh, okay, yeah. That now that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Um, but the two things I think that really stood out in the room to us is so many Disney elements, um, because no other DVC resort really has that. So I, I know a lot of you guys always hear the negativity that I always say about you know DVC resorts. Um, first of all, let me let me start with saying this. I love DVC. I'm gonna say that flat out. 
if you haven't bought into a DVC resort, buy into a DVC resort if you can afford it. Um, but one of my biggest um, issues I've ever had with DVC is that almost all the rooms we've ever stayed at, I felt like I was on vacation, but I never thought I was staying on Disney property. Um, like, I, not to interrupt you, and I apologize, but uh, before we bought DVC, actually, when we signed our contracts, we were staying at Art of Animation. That screams Disney. Stuff from The Lion King, and it, it, it has cars, it has all of that, and that's why I really, really enjoyed that resort, but they don't have DVC. And a lot of the DVC resorts have, like, a touch here or there. Um, like, in Copper Creek, there was, um, there was some things with uh, Bambi with at Saratoga Springs there were Disney horses um they have like little itty bitty things but it's not like for us we want to be surrounded by Disney that's who we are I get there are people who don't want that and there are resorts for those people um but that's what we want and this actually this offers it it's the first Disney resort where everywhere you look there was a hidden Mickey there was Mickey on the wall there was Mickey and Pluto there was Ratatouille there was 101 Dalmatians there was Tangled Beauty, Tangled Beauty and the Beast just to name like a few of what we saw um it was great it was really immersive but it also kept with the theme which I loved the next thing we loved is Chip trying to burrow his nose into my arm <laughs> we may be hiding a toy <laughs> so the second thing we loved were the bathrooms there was just something so beautiful about it, it was covered in marble um, it has the same tub as Copper Creek, which is nice. Um, it has honestly, that rainfall shower. Honestly, even the overall look had a very similar look to Copper Creek. And if you guys haven't seen the room tour of Copper Creek, uh, make sure to uh, click the link below or one of the eyes wherever we decide to put the link for it and check out the room tour for that. I, the one thing I loved about the bathroom is even in a studio, there are two showers which is the same as Polynesian, which is what everyone liked, but not every other DVC resort has that. It has the rainfall shower stall, um, and then it also has a tub for people with kids because the studios do sleep five. So if you want five in there, you have five people sharing one shower. It's kind of annoying. Um, and that's the one thing we fell in love with Polynesian that it had. Um, so Polynesian has some like pros and cons because. The poly only has the studios or the bungalows, so you're really limited in your group yeah. size. Um, but it has those two bathrooms, and it has a lot of the newer features that before Copper Creek were only in the Polynesian. With all that being said, we were t while we were watching the videos on the Riviera, we were talking about what we liked and what we didn't like, and um, down the line, we know we have 200 points now. We know that when we have kids, we're probably going to want more points. And while we were watching the Riviera Resort videos, we were talking about what we liked about it and what we didn't. And one of the things we didn't like about it was its placement. Yes, it's at a moderate resort, so it has, uh, it does have the, um, the bus system really only, but now the Skyliner's going in, and it will have the dual Skyliner um, station. Um, one that goes towards Epcot and one that goes towards Hollywood Studios. You can go either way. That's really nice. But the one thing that's kind of, and, and I, until I try it, I can't say I don't like it, that's throwing me off about the Skyliner is the lack of air conditioning. Yeah, so I don't know uh, how many of you guys have ever seen videos of the new Skyliner or how many videos that are even out there, but Amy learned that uh, there's only windows that actually open up, swing out like this. Um, there is no AC in those cars. It solely relies on how fast movement, you're going. Movement, yeah. So uh, during you know 100 degree weather in Florida, which is stereotypical for nine months out of the year, um, it's going to get really really hot in those Skyliners. So also it happens on the monorail. If you get stuck up there, I know what happens. I know you'll be safe. You know that doesn't worry me. But if you're stuck there and not moving, that air movement's doing nothing for you because you're not moving. Um, and by the way, shout out to Reedy Creek uh, Fire Department, because um, they're the ones that are going to be rescuing us. Yeah, <laughs> um, but also they haven't really displayed how if you're handicapped and you need extra time, how you'll be getting onto the Skyliner. Will they be stopping it? Or is there a special place that they have an extra car sitting for handicapped guests that they can move onto the track? I mean, I've seen videos that, you know, they kind of like shoot a cart off by I'm wondering if that's more for maintenance than it is handicap accessible. The one thing that we did really like is we like resorts 
on the monorail. It's just our yes. preference. We love the monorail because we're in and out of the Magic Kingdom multiple times on a trip. And I'm expensive. And usually most of the monorail resorts are very expensive. But when booking DVC, it's really hard to book those resorts. Um, so DVC with your home resort, you can book 11 months out. With any other resort, you can book seven months out. Um, but it's really hard to book like We've never been able to book Grand Floridian or Bay Lake Tower. Mm -hmm. um, we have been able to book Copper Creek. And I'm sure after the like hype wears off of Riviera, you'll be easily able to book it because there are so many rooms. Yeah, this place is absolutely massive. So, I mean, for all you guys who haven't bought DVC uh, Riviera yet, trust me, it will never be, I don't think it'll be 100% sold out, ever. I don't, I think it'll eventually get sold out. My thing is there's no real home resort perk to it. With Polynesian, we have a home resort perk of being near the monorail. And right across and, the street from And Magic we're at a Kingdom. hard to book resort. Yeah. With Riviera, it's not gonna be, I don't think it's, and I could be wrong, I don't think it's gonna be a hard to book resort. Yeah, and again, once the Skyliner, you know, all that popularity goes down where everyone's already done it for six months to a year and everyone stayed at the Riviera, like Amy was saying before, mm -hmm. all everything's gonna, hype's gonna go down and everyone's gonna be able to stay there. And it's not, it, I don't think the Skyliner is gonna be as popular as the monorail. It will be for a while, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I just don't think it's, there's no home resort perks with it. From our experience booking DVC resorts, um, not at the Polynesian, not our home resort, we would probably buy into Bay Lake. We, we had a long discussion of Grand Floridian or Bay Lake because those are the two we would really decide between, although we love Copper Creek and we buy into Copper Creek in a second. We found Copper Creek easy to book, so I don't want to buy it because it's easy to book. There's no real perk there besides we love the resort. And don't, don't get us wrong, like she was like, if you guys remember, I think it was like the wow count oh my while God. I was filming. <laughs> I edited that video, yeah. Um, I really did love Copper Creek a lot. I mean, it was definitely up there. I know I'm gonna, you know, get a lot of hate mail for this one, but I pretty much think Copper Creek was up there with the Grand Floridian, so. And that's a lot for him to say. Yeah. Um, the reason, and I think I'm kind of the one that said it, I would pick Bay Lake. I'll give my opinions and you can give yours. I'd pick Bay Lake over Grand Floridian. The Grand Floridian's so spread out. If you're walking from your DVC room to the main building, you have more outdoor time than Bay Lake. You also, if you want to take the monorail, then have to go up a level. Um, and there, and then you have to go back outside for their quick service. Everything's kind of spread out. I recently watched uh, a few videos on the Grand Floridian. And something, like Amy was just saying, you know, everything is outside. Something I really didn't even think of, even to get to your room, it's outside. And um, something I also didn't think about, it's Florida. It's always raining. There's always some type of hurricane yeah. or something happening. So for you to go from the main building to your room, you're outside. And there is a covered walkway, but the ground still gets wet. I know this is such like a petty argument, but the ground still gets wet. And there's still like the Grand Floridian is very spread out. The DVC building from the main building is very far away in terms of DVC building. Yeah, but that wasn't even what I was saying. I mean, forget about the ground being wet. I mean, because you have the you know the sidewalk, but it's open wall. So if you're walking from where the stairs are, or the yeah. elevators are, you're still wind driven rain. It's Florida. It gets windy and it gets rainy, like that. And with Bay Lake. Um, the walkway, there's two walkways to the um, Contemporary. I'm going to talk about the one on the fourth floor. Um, it's a covered walkway. It's suspended in the air. It goes right to the fourth floor of the Contemporary. And if you've never been the Contemporary, the Contemporary is kind of an odd building. The very first floor you walk in has the lobby um, and it walks out into the pool. And then there's like a little coffee area and the bus stop. Then you take an escalator actually right up to, I believe, yeah, it's the fourth floor concourse. And that concourse um, brings you to, it has the quick service, it has the uh, character dining, um, it has a bar, it has all the little shops, and it also has the monorail, the monorail stop and that walkway to DVC. You literally walk into the main contemporary building and everything you need is right there. The other thing that like, it's really minor, Right when you walk in from DVC, 
right to your right hand side is that little sundry shop. So you need you need diapers, you need a stroller. It is right there. It is the, one of the closest things to the DVC building, um, which I really, really like. So pretty much in a nutshell, if we had to ever buy, or let me phrase that, when we decide to buy more <laughs> points, um, we would probably buy a resale. Yes. Um, and we would probably buy Bay Lake Tower for that reason. I mean, if you guys have any other, you know, ideas or perks or cons of what we've mm -hmm. said or other resorts that you feel are on a higher level that maybe we didn't even think of that are DVC, leave a comment below. Uh, let us know because we're not perfect. You guys may have stayed somewhere and thought yeah. of something that we didn't just mention. And there's a lot of resorts that we didn't mention that we have stayed at. We've stayed at Saratoga Springs and Animal Kingdom Lodge and we've talked about them in the past. I didn't bring them up in this video because it was kind of just, I wanted to bring you in this to the conversation that we were having. Um, but there's a lot of things that we've experienced at other DVC resorts that we did not like. So in essence, what you guys should get out of this video is, yes, you know, the, you know, the Riviera is a really beautiful, you know, room, but you should probably also look at other videos and look at other resorts and see what are the pros and cons. Don't just say, oh, the Riviera is absolutely gorgeous. Think of the logistics behind it, how big your family is, you know, where, you know, where do you want to stay? How much do you want to pay in, in price for points? Stuff like that. And be sure to look at the resort map as well. Um, because like I said, even though the Grand Floridian doesn't seem that spread out in terms of room, the DVC building is pretty set far back. Um, Saratoga Springs is all DVC and Old Key West is pretty much all DVC. So those you don't have to worry about, you can get preferred rooms closer. Um, but also Animal Kingdom Lodge, there's a whole separate Kadani village is DVC. There's some DVC in Jumbo House, not a lot. So if you're staying in Kadani Village, you have to walk over to the main building to get that quick service. So there's definitely things to look into when you're trying to book a resort. Fully, fully research your resort before you stay there, especially with DVC. Because there's little kind of one-off things that because these rooms were mostly added after resorts were built, there's things that you wouldn't think about. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and see, see you real soon. soon.